Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. So in our previous lecture we discussed about weight estimation where the total weight of this aircraft is summed up as the structural weight as a propulsion weight right total weight is summed up with structural weight propulsion weight and payload as well as weight due to fuel. So we express this total weight or takeoff weight as a weight fraction, structural weight fraction, this propulsion weight fraction payload plus fuel, fuel weight fraction. Right. So, where W takeoff is obtained with the help of so W takeoff is obtained by rearranging this equation where in the denominator you have all the weight fractions And we also witnessed WF by W takeoff is equals to 1 minus W6 by W1, where W6 by W1 is equals to W5, W2 by W1. W3 by W2. W2, W4 by W3, W5 by W4 into W6 by W5, right. So these are the weight fractions, weight ratios for various segments, right. So say typically we have segmented the entire mission as takeoff, climb, cruise, approach, and land. So we have segmented this entire mission based upon the dynamics during that particular phase, right. So this fuel, this weight fraction represents the fuel weight that is consumed during this, during these phases of this mission. Now, out of which we also discussed that these are like more or less, I mean, uh, for takeoff, climb, approach, and landing, we have weight fractions from the historical database. So, what what that differs from UAV to UAV or the aircraft to aircraft is the cruise profile or the cruise fuel consumption, which mainly depends upon the mission requirements, right, or the tasks to perform. Now, so in order to calculate this cruise performance, we studied about range and endurance. Right? So we, we started with range and endurance, but we, we finished what is range. We have defined specific fuel consumption of this IC engine based systems, which is the amount of fuel consumed 
to produce unit power right so the power that we have discussed is the shaft so the so this will be the shaft power so cp since it's a wf is negative so cp is a figure of merit so we'll define cp as minus wf by psh right shaft power and we witness that the range or the range for this uh, propeller driven uav is given by eta propeller by cp into l by d l by d into ln of w i by w i per i plus so if you want to get if you want to know the weight fraction fuel weight fraction then what you have is w i plus 1 by w is equals to e raised to the power of minus r into cp divided by eta of the propeller into l by d this is the same equation what we discussed in our previous lecture right now let us discuss about fuel weight fraction for loitering so what is the specific fuel consumption by definition cp is minus w dot f by p s h right this is equals to minus eta of the propeller into w dot f divided by t into v infinity right this implies cp is equals to minus eta of the propeller divided by t into v infinity into dwf we know that right so dw is equals to dwf since dw is equals to dwf you can write eta into dw so dt is equals to minus eta of the propeller into cp into 1 by v infinity into w by t into dw by dt sorry into dw by w so this implies so in order to get the endurance i have to integrate it over the time 0 to t right so the endurance of the time of flight is equals to minus integral over w i to w i plus 1 into eta of propeller by cp into 1 by v infinity into l by d into dw by right so endurance is equals to there are two ways to integrate this one like constant velocity and constant cl climb cl cruise like both the lift coefficient and velocity remains constant but as the fuel is consumed since you are having same lift and same velocity we know l is equals to w right in cruise which is w is half rho v square s into cl right so one one such condition in which cruise can be attained is constant cl and constant v right and in that case this w is continuously changing because the fuel is getting consumed right the only variable that has to change is density that means you will end up gaining altitude which is known as cruise climb right just like a balloon you don't actually climb but you keep gaining the altitude because there is a additional lift acting on the system which is greater than the weight right why because there is 
fuel consumption. We call it as cruise climb. So, if we consider say assuming that density vari variation in the density is allowed right and say V and C L is constant. So, this particular terms remains constant. So, in that case what will be this equation? So, that there are two cases right. Let us do I mean let us solve this for this particular case where density is allowed to change. That means, the aircraft can gain altitude as it cruises. So, in that case for constant C L and V infinity. So, for that case what happens? The endurance is, is equals to minus or eta of the propeller divided by C P and velocity remains same constant 1 by V infinity into L by D remains constant because C L remains constant here, C L and C uh, when C L remains constant C D also C D will also remain constant. Yeah. So, the integral will be ln of W of i plus 1 or W i by W plus 1. So, this is the endurance of a UAV when of a propeller driven UAV when you have constant velocity and C L right. And for constant density and C L that means, you do not want to vary the altitude, you want to have your crew is at a particular altitude and then the C L is remained constant, which means the pilot has to continuously decrease the velocity as the fuel load is decreasing. It is more a quasi study right. So, what happens in that case? What will be the endurance? Is equals to integral over. So, this is an equation of endurance in general. say W estimation 11. So, endurance is W i plus 1 or say yeah W i W i plus 1 rate of propeller C of p into 1 by V infinity C L by C D into D W by W. Now, from since we are talking about cruise condition, we know L is equals to W. So, for this lift is equals to weight which is which in this case the corresponding velocity of flight is twice the wing loading divide by rho into C L substitute that here. So, what you have is integral W i plus 1 to W i eta of the propeller by C p into square root over rho s by 2 rho s by 2 into C l power 3 by 2 by C d right C l power 3 by 2 by C d 3 by 2 by C d d w by w into w power 3 by 2 right because there is root over w here and 1 by c 1 by root c l. So, it becomes c l into c l power c l plus yeah c l into c l power 1 by 2 which is c l power 3 by 2 by c d and w into w multiplied by w raised to the power of 1 by 2 which is w power 3 by 2 ok. Now, here we have density is constant 
we assume density as constant in this case and C L is constant, right? Rho is constant and C L is constant. If you say C L is constant, C D also remains constant. So, other than this particular term, everything else is constant in this case. So, what you have here? So, the endurance for this case is equals to eta of the propeller by C P into C L power 3 by 2 by C D into under root rho s divided by 2 into minus 2 1 by root over w from w i to w i plus 1 right. So, this will turn out to be so the ratio of propeller efficiency to cp specific fuel consumption into root over 2 rho s density at that particular altitude into cl power 3 by 2 by cd into 1 by root over w i plus 1 minus 1 by root w i right. This is our equation w e 13, weight estimation 13 right. So, w i plus 1 is smaller than w i. So, this quantity is larger than this quantity, right. So, this is a positive value. So, everything else is positive here, right. Now, from here we generally consider for initial weight estimation, that is why we get an estimate out of it with the assumptions, with, right. We are, we are having certain assumptions here, with that assumptions we will get an estimate of the fuel load. So, which may be off by at least 20 percent of the actual value, right. So, to start with we can have, we can go ahead with this assumptions and say if you want to find out w i by w, w i plus 1, all you have to do is multiply the given endurance by C p and v infinity, v infinity is the corresponding velocity of flight and you should know what is the corresponding L by d, right and propeller, propeller efficiency as well, right. Once you know this, then you will be able to find out what is the weight fraction. So, we will do a small example uh, uh, once we discuss this weight estimation as well as, as well as wing sizing, right. So, when this endurance can be maximum? In this case, you have to fly at L by d maximum. So, the corresponding velocity for L by d max is v for L by d max, right. You should fly at the corresponding velocity where L by d is maximum, right. In this case, when e can be maximum when C L power 3 by 2 by C D has to be maximum here, right. You fly at sea level, this particular term will be higher, right. Assuming these parameters are not going to be affected with either velocity or altitude, right. And you have, if you want this e to be maximum, rho has to be at sea level and C L power 3 by 2 by C D has to be maximum and you should carry more fuel, right. This difference has to be more, okay. That means, there should be a lot of reduction in weight, right. When there is a lot of reduction in weight, the, this quantity will be higher compared to this. So, the difference will be higher there, where you will end up having high endurance. So, for this case, so E max can be attained at L by D max and V for L by D max. So, what is L by D max? 1 by root over 4 k C D naught, where C L is equals to root over C D naught by k. In the corresponding velocity, you can find out. Similarly, for this case C L 
should be root over 3 C D naught by K for Emax in this case corresponds to C L for C L power 3 by 2 by C D max and C D is equals to 4 C D naught. So, the induced drag is 3 times the profile drag in this case. Induced drag coefficient is thrice the profile drag coefficient. Okay. Till now, we are talking about fuel based system, right. So, in the, mo in the previous lecture, we were not able to, I mean, show you a proper engine, right, proper IC engine. So, this is a bigger version of it. So, I have the specifications of this as well. So, it is GF 40 OS engine, right, and it has a 39.96 cc and for displacement and a bore of 40 mm diameter bore and a stroke length of 32 mm approximately and the feasible rpm is about from 1800 to 9000 right and the output from this is 3.5 hp at 8600 rpm so it weighs about say 1.7 kgs approximately so you can see this is an spark plug there is a igniter for it right you can connect it here and this will be connected to this particular wire which actually generates power with the crank rotation right this particular wall that you can see here see it will automatically come back to zero you can control the fuel air mixture right this is like a uh, lid for this fuel air mixture right it acts like a lid to this mouth and and you can see there is a wall that will be rotating as i rotate this lever right so it actually controls the fuel air mixture and so the rpm of this shaft right so once you mount the propeller here you will be able to convert this shaft power available mechanical shaft power to the useful power So, I thought of showing you some like brushless motors as well. So, this is a, it's a carbon fiber propeller, three carbon fiber propellers, three blades mounted on this hub, right, which is attached to the outrunner. It is a 515 kV outrunner, and this hub is a foldable hub for this propellers. There is a jet cat jet engine, you can see this. It is a small jet engine, mini jet engine, which can produce a 22,000, uh, 220 Newton's force, which is approximately 22 kg's force, right. It can produce a 22 kg thrust. See, if you can see, you can see a stator there in the front. Yeah, it weighs about 1.8 kg's and yeah, some of the specifications I have here. Maximum thrust is about 220 Newtons at 1,17,000 rpm. So, this rpm has a range of 35,000 to 1,17,000 rpm. So, yeah, it weighs about 1.8 kgs and ideal thrust of 9 Newtons, which is approximately 1 kg of thrust, right. So, 30, 30, 30 centimeters and diameter of 18, 11 centimeters, right. Okay. So, this is the jet engine. So, if time permits, I will try to install this jet engine in a delta wing configuration and we will fly. Otherwise, we will all will fly one or two delta wings with normal propeller driven electric, I mean propeller driven engines which are powered by battery. Okay. So, let us talk about how to estimate the battery weight. Say, if you are going for a brushless motor similar to one this. So, if you want to power this brushless motor, you need to carry a battery. Say, if you install this motor on a UAV, right. So, you need to know how much battery I need to carry. Say, if I want to have a certain mission requirements. Say, if 10 kilometers range or say, if I have, if I want to have an endurance of 
one hour. So, how the battery weight changes right, as the mission requirement changes. So, let us look at how to estimate the battery weight. Right. For an electric powered propulsion system or a battery powered propulsion system, what we need to define is specific energy density, you know, specific energy density of the battery, which, which talks about the amount of energy stored per unit weight. weight of this battery, which is watt hour, watt, watt hour per kg. The units of this specific energy density are watt hour per kg. So, each and every battery that we use to power these motors, they have certain energy density, right. So, based upon the available energy density, you can, you will be able to estimate the battery weight once you know what is a corresponding energy that is required to perform the particular mission, right. Okay. So, let us go back to this equation. So, weight, overall take of weight is equals to structural weight ratio times the take off weight and propulsion weight ratio times the take off weight plus payload plus battery. Right. So, it is bit different compared to that of fuel based system. Okay. So, what we go ahead with this is, so for this particular mission requirement, how to solve, how do we estimate the battery weight and the overall take off weight. So, similar to that of a rear case, we also, we consider this structural weight ratio and the propulsion weight ratio from the historical database, right. And we also consider what is the overall takeoff weight here. How? We take the nearby flight vehicle which is performing a similar mission, right. So, we will take the weight initially for from the historical database, even the overall takeoff weight. At the same time, we will take the structural weight and the propulsion weight, right. And the payload is given for you. Let us say these things are known for the time being. So, it is an iterative process, but uh, in this we will try to address say if this is the overall takeoff weight, what is the percentage of battery weight for that overall takeoff weight. Let us say if you want to build a UAV of 5 kg, now you should you should know what should be the fraction of this overall weight of 5 kg should be the battery weight, right. So, let us solve that problem first and then we will see how this iterative process works to actually find the weight estimation, right, weight estimation of the new design, okay. So, how to go ahead with this? Say we know specific energy density, say this is known, specific energy density is known, you need to know what is the energy so that you will get to know what is the weight, right. That means, weight of battery is equals to energy required. or energy to be supplied to the system divided by SF specific energy SED specific energy density, right. So, energy required energy is watt hour or joules, right, watt second in fact or watt hour per kg, okay. So, th this is uh, energy required is watt hour and this is watt hour per kg. So, what you are going to get is a weight of the battery in kg, right. Now, how to find out the energy required? So, for any pro mission profile, say, so you, again going back to this mission profile, typical mission profile, where it involves take off, cruise, uh, climb, cruise approach, oh, sorry, descend or glide, 
लाने सो द टोटल एनर्जी रिक्वायर्ड इज इक्वल्स टू ई टी इज अ टोटल एनर्जी रिक्वायर्ड इज इक्वल्स टू एनर्जी फॉर टेक ऑफ प्लस एनर्जी प्लस क्लाइम इट्स अ समिशन ऑफ एनर्जी फॉर दिस एंटायर फेस एनर्जी फॉर क्लाइम प्लस एनर्जी फॉर क्रूज प्लस एनर्जी फॉर डिसेंट एंड एनर्जी फॉर Land. So, if you see here, so the most of the UAVs, the major part of energy is consumed during cruise, and to some extent, very li little extent can be climbed. So, say if you know the cruise energy, and descent is most likely a glide in case of UAVs, unlike unlike to this, uh, unlike commercial aircrafts, the descent is most likely a glide here, and landing, of course. it hardly requires energy so say if i estimate the cruise energy and also the climb energy required then i will take some factor of safety as to account for this descent landing and take off so this is my initial estimate right now how do i find how to i how to how should i find this cruise energy so one way to do that is energy for cruise is equals to power required during cruise into total time of flight if i know the total time of flight during cruise i'll know what is the corresponding uh, I, and if i can estimate the power required during cruise i'll be able to estimate the corresponding energy required during this cruise so how should i calculate this power required during cruise so drag re power required is drag into velocity right of course this energy required during cruise you need to have a factor of safety right to account it for the other other cases at the same time the efficiency factors right you can multiply all the efficiency factors that's pi into eta whatever the final or required is equals to pi into eta into yeah so say pi into eta into energy cruise right where pi i is equals to 1 to n eta i right so where eta talks about factor of safety efficiency and all these things so you multiply all those and find out what is the corresponding energy required you should divide this in fact right because this is the output that you uh, this is the input that you have to give right from the battery you need to supply this much of energy so this is like inverse of it right so if you do this then you will be able to estimate what is the actual energy required so this may also include the what do you call battery cannot discharge 100% right there is a limit for discharge so that limit can also be included as well as there can be losses when you connect this battery to a particular power plant right those losses can also be included here right now let's go back to this for energy for cruise so this is drag into velocity to delta t what is drag half rho v infinity cube s into cd into delta t right so velocity for this particular cruise mission will be given and you will be asked like how much time i mean as a part of mission requirements you will get this delta t you need to know what is this cd in order to figure out what is the cruise energy for cruise right this is like no instead of there are two way, two ways right so you are actually given the information about areas reference area and cd let us say if you are not if you don't know this reference area and cd what happens right what i can do so energy for cruise is equals to power required into delta t Where power required is drag into velocity into delta t, right? Oh, our power required is thrust required into delta t into v infinity. So what is thrust required? So thrust required is W by L by d. So if you can refer our previous lectures, you will be able to find because T is equals to 
d and l is equals to w for cruise right so thrust required is w by l by d now if you substitute this in that energy required equation this is like w by l by d into v infinity into delta t so all you need to know is what should be the l by d of flight so usually it will be it will range from 10 to 15 right for a normal uav so v infinity will be given you know you have initially considered some w takeoff which is that same w here right you can this is takeoff into v infinity into delta t right now you know what is the energy required here now the weight of battery is equals to or this is energy for cruise sorry energy for cruise so energy required is equals to energy for cruise divided by efficiencies eta i whatever the efficiencies that you want to consider here this is our w e what is the number 14. w e 14 and w e 15. So, say if, we, if the cruise is at a constant velocity, then if you want to uh, have maximum cruise or uh, minimum energy and you have to, so for the same time of flight, if you at the same velocity or say for the same time of flight, if you want to spend minimum energy, all you need to do is to ma fly at maximum L by D, where the corresponding V infinity will be, right? You have to fly at the corresponding V infinity as well v infinity at l by d max right so weight of battery is equals to energy required by scd energy required we got it from the kr which is e cruise so this is for initial estimate right pi i is equals to 1 to n on to n eta i right into specific energy density. So, this is the weight of the battery and the percent is the ratio of the uh, what do you call battery fraction divided by total takeoff weight. Then you will get to know say if you have want to build a 5 kg UAV how much energy density uh, how much battery you need to carry right so let us solve a small example so we have slowly started design the design of uav right you because we initially figured out how to select a power plant or the engine sizing and then we are trying to uh, fi figure out how to estimate the total weight right so let's take one small example we'll also come back to the iterative process once you once we solve this example right example here following are the specifications an all electric all electric propeller driven wing alone crop delta so, what is given? Its weight 
weight is 3.5 kg span 1.5 meters cr root cord Point nine meters and tip cord point one five meters and also the plots of CL versus alpha of this entire UAV full scale UAV are given here and there is a plot that represents CL square versus CD for this full scale UAV is also given and then coming back to the question find the battery weight fraction of UAV to carry out a 20 minute loiter with a trim angle of attack 4 degrees. What should be the additional battery weight required to perform the same task at 3 kilometer altitude? Right. So, first let us solve this question in the first place. Okay. Also find, assume energy density of the battery is 0.15, assume energy density of the battery is 0.1 watt or kilowatt hour per kg also find the Oswald's efficiency factor E. So, see I am using if you observe I am using the same configuration in most of the examples. So, it is worth you get used to these numbers at least the aspect ratio weight and all these things. So, that it will be helpful for you during the end semester examination and examination right. So, you can refer our previous lecture. So, for this configuration the weight is given as 3.5 into 9.81 which is 34.33 kgs approximately newtons sorry newtons right it is given so s is again uh, v into lambda cr by 2 into 1 plus lambda which is equals to 0.787 meter square and then lambda is ct by cr is 1.167 and AR is B square by S which is equals to 2.87 right. It is a crop delta wing UAV. Fine. Now, what do we uh, what we need to do here? We need to find the battery weight fraction of this UAV to carry out a 20 minute loiter to trim angle of attack of 4 degrees. SED is given as 0.1 kilowatt hour per kg, right. So, SED is 0.1 kilowatt hour per kg, which is equals to 100 watt hour per kg, right. So, let us figure out what is the battery weight that we need to carry in order to complete this task for this particular UA. Oh. So, in order to find the battery weight, what I need is the energy required for this system, right. How do you find energy required here? So, energy required is equals to assuming it is 100 percent efficient in all the cases in this case, right. I mean, you know, uh, at all the, I mean, say there are various losses that happens, right. So, assuming there is no loss throughout the process, right. So, uh, energy required is equals to. drag into velocity is a power required into 
delta t right so why we consider drag here because yeah we can also consider the other case like what is the l by d for this particular configuration or say if you know what is the cd here since you know at alpha is equal to 4 degrees you will know the corresponding cl here at alpha is equals to 4 the corresponding cl is 0.2 approximately right and for from here you you will be able to find out see this is cd versus cl square right which means in the linear regime this is like y is equals to mx plus c it's a straight line right where y is cd is equals to cd naught plus slope here will be k into cl square so this straight line will give you the drag polar when you plot cd versus cl square right so cd naught you can find out and k you can find out so for this particular case it's 0 0.035 and k value is 0 0.16 into cl square right once you know k k is equals to 1 by pi e a r you know the aspect ratio, you can find out the corresponding Oswald's efficiency factor, which is approximately 65 percent, I think. Right? You can calculate that here. So, ER is equals to drag into velocity into the time of flight. Here it is 20 minutes of flight. Now, what is drag here? Half rho V square into V infinity is V cube S into C D naught plus K into C L square into delta T. Of at alpha is equal to 4 degrees, you will be able to find out what is the corresponding CD because you know CL and you know the CL square value, you can find out the CD or you can simply from this, you can substitute in this equation once you have this, right? From this 4 degrees, you know what is the CL value, you can substitute this. So, so 0 0.5 into 1.225 into 20. What is the velocity of flight here then? We know L is equals to W. For the level flight condition, we have L is equals to W. So the corresponding velocity is square root of 2 W by S divided by rho into C L, corresponding C L. C L at alpha is equals to 4 degrees, right? So what is the value here? It's 18.1 meters per second approximately. 18.87 meters per seconds. Meter per second. Now substitute that velocity here. 18.87 cube into 0 0.787. What is CD naught plus KCL square? Or the corresponding value here? You can figure it out, which is approximately 04. CD value is 0 0.0414. So, this is CD is 0.787 and the total time of flight into 20 into 60 because it is in minutes, right? So, 20 into 60 is like 1200 seconds, right? So, the total energy required is approximately 16, 160, watt second, 160, watt second. So, if you convert that to, so let us convert that to whatever, energy required 160, divided by 60 into 60, this becomes 44.5 watt hour right now you know energy required in watt hour you know scd that is 0 0.1 kilowatt hour which is 100 watt hour per kg now divide this so the total battery weight should be equal to energy required by scd which is 444.66 watt hour by 100 whatever per kg, which is 4.446 kg, right, which is approximately 440 or 450 grams. It is 
So, for this 3.5 kg is UAV, so half a kg is a battery weight, you need to consider half a kg as a battery weight for this UAV.